All right, guys, thank you for making the quick transition over. Today's class is an important one. Um, this month, as you know, we're focusing a lot on those prerequisite skills that you need to have in your repertoire, right? That's your toolkit in order to be able to study. So whether you've hit a roadblock in your studying and you're like, well, fuck. I'm still stuck studying the same thing over and over. And every time I study, I just get distracted. Or you know that you're going to start studying soon. Or you know that the collective opens on Sunday for summer. So you're getting excited. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, no matter what, this class is going to be really useful for you. And hopefully, you will actually learn some things about self-management, which is something that we do cover in the Cooper textbook. Um, briefly, but this is actually an applied. And so we have Danielle here who has become a teacher's pet as well. Hey, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. Danielle, where are you going to share the, she made some data sheets. Um, I'm going to share them in the Facebook group. Okay, perfect. So you guys can print them off. Yes. Uh -huh. Cool. So. So we'll share those. So without further ado, let's get effing started. All right. Yes. Yeah, so I made a bunch of data sheets and um, for all of you guys, so the layout's gonna share them so you can print them out, whatever you need. There's a bunch of different types, so I just wanna make sure I try to get everybody's needs. So, okay, here we go. I hope that I can click it. Okay, so, hold on. I'm not used to sharing my screen and now I have like a tiny person. Okay, so, right, we're gonna just talk about self-monitoring, right? So that involves where you observe yourself and record your own behavior. So I feel like this is really important when it comes to studying. We always just say, I'm gonna study today. Well, we need that operational definition, right? We can't just say, I'm gonna study. What it, we really need to be specific in what, are, what, are you, what is your goal for your study session? Whether your study session be 30 minutes or two hours, is it that you want to um, read one chapter? Is it, is it that you want to rewrite your notes and then review your notes? Is it that you want to get 50, uh, you know, you want to get 50 questions done in the study notes app, build that fluency, like that's your goal each day. So be mindful when you're setting down to do your studying, like what is it that you are going to monitor that time when you're doing your studying? Okay. And Leah, you jump in here whenever. I am. I'm just getting the sheets ready real quick to. Oh, okay. Okay. So, right, this is always what hurts you on yourself, which is sometimes the worst, right? It's like a cringe. So, this is one of those, like, you take a mock exam and that you didn't do really great, and then you have to look at the information, and you're like, oh, my God, I did so terrible. But you have to look at that. We, we need to know that baseline. Where are we at? So, it, you know, it's kind of same thing when you, when you step on the scale, and you're like, oh, this is, this is not where I want to be, but we know that we can go up from here. So when you're looking at your own behavior, you know, you, and you want to have that baseline. What, where do you want to go? Is it that you want to get an 80 on a BAS mock? Is it that you want to get a 70 on the BAS mock? Is it that you want to up your fluency in your SAF med? So, you know, at the beginning of your studying that this is kind of where you're at. This is your, you know, it took you um, 15 minutes to do your stack of staff meds and you want to get it down to eight minutes, right? You want to, you, you have that data that you can track. So just being mindful of, we have to self-evaluate, even though it really stinks sometimes and it makes you want to cringe or it makes you want to cry and it's sometimes difficult to look at, but that gives you a good baseline to know where you need to go. And it's almost better. Like, honestly, what I always say is like, for example, even with Eliron with like weight loss or something, if he wants to lose weight, I'm like, dude, you're so lucky. Like you already drink, like you drink a lot of beer. Like you have a great thing. Like if you stop that, you know that you could improve a lot. So actually if you have a low baseline, you got lots to work with. That's actually opportunity, right? So like you got to know how poorly you're doing so that you know that you can improve. Right? right, like when you're that person, like I know Danielle, weren't you like one point away or something? Or like, like passing, yes. Yeah. No, three points. Okay, that's, that's even like harder, right? To get yourself back on. So like if you know like, okay, shit, I'm scoring a 40 on these tests. 
you know you have so much opportunity and what to improve in. It's going to be fun looking at your graphs of that improvement. So you definitely need a baseline. Right. You know, and then those mock exams give you that those task list areas and maybe that you know that you're not super great in measurement and that you know that measurement is chapter uh, four and five and I think six possibly. And then you, you know those are areas you need to grow in. And so you know that you got a 36% in measurement and you need to get to a 70, you know, you can track that. Okay. So you, we all, we all have to reinforce ourselves, right? We all love to buy something off of Amazon. We all, um, I do, I love to buy makeup and shoes and, um, and so, and my, my overall reinforcement for passing my test was I was going to get a tattoo. I have lots of tattoos. So I knew that that was my overall goal was that I was going to get a tattoo, but you better believe I reinforced myself with some pins along the way and pads of paper and markers. And, you know, my, my daughter was really great at writing me little love notes. Like you're doing such a great job studying. Like she was filling my, um, NCR a hundred percent. So what, what schedule are you on? Right. So think about that. Are you doing a fixed ratio? Are you doing a fixed interval schedule? What, what, what are you, where is your schedule of reinforcement going to be? And what is your MO, right? So build, build yourself up to be successful and put those things in place that help you access that positive and negative reinforcement, right? So maybe it's that you've read, you read chapter five and it's really long. And after chapter five, you're going to, you know, buy yourself some nail polish or whatever. Um, and the, or maybe it's that you like negative reinforcement and you like marking off those things or coloring in those chapters, like, oh, another one down, another one down. So put reinforcement in your study schedule. We all need a little reinforcement in there. Love it. All right. Oh, I thought it was going to click, but it didn't. Okay. So this is a huge one. I, I, this is hard sometimes, right? We all have to kind of remind ourselves like, hey, I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna have negative self-talk, right? We have to give ourselves those positive vibes because we are the ones that know why this I'm is- Sorry, one second. All right. I'll mute my, are you guys hearing like the lawn mowers outside? I don't hear anything. Okay, I didn't know if it was like cutting in the sound. Okay, I'll mute myself if I need to. Okay. No, I think you're fine. Um, so, you know, setting yourself up, t saying those positive things, putting those, you know, Filter your people if you need to, right? So you, if you feel like I, you know, feel like I can't talk to certain people because they don't understand my why or why I'm spending all of my time or why I can't do, go to this activity or do this because I'm studying, you know, maybe just take a time out from those friends and, you know, put yourself in a situation with people that understand why you're doing what you're doing because they have the same type of passion. So um, you have to believe in yourself. It, first time, fourth time, tenth time, you have to believe that you can do it. You have to um, know that you can do it and, and say those positive things and change your mindset that, you know, you can do hard things. This, this test is hard, but you can do hard things. So write yourself little love notes. If you're feeling down, write a note in your book so you know that you can go to it later when you're having a rough day and you can look at your why and you can remind yourself to breathe and that you've got it. Put a, a positive you quote. You got it, girl. You got it, girl. A recording of Ellie Ron saying that. Maybe that's something next on study notes is the recording of yeah, Ellie Ron. Yeah, on the website, I totally agree. <laughs> so, you know, change your background. Filter your Instagram if you have to. Fine. There's some great like positive quotes on Instagram, like pages that you can follow. Um, just, just get your, just get your positive vibes on. Don't let anybody take that from you and, and just get your brain in that situation so that you're ready to accept that information because you're, you're allowing yourself and you're in that positive mindset. Love it. Thank you. Okay. This is just, this is just a little visual for y'all, right? So you're going to set your goal, make your plan. You're going to get to work. You're going to stick to it and you can reach your goal. Okay. I mean, you can always write when it says stick to it, you can always make adjustments. You're just still sticking to getting to work and studying. Um, so we want to set realistic goals, right? So our overall goal is always to pass the test, right? But we definitely need to have those small obtainable goals so that we um, 
have that momentum, right? So, cause we're like checking things off and we're getting things done and we're, we're building that momentum within ourselves that we want, we'll continue to study. And so, I just want to add one thing here. Like you guys work with clients, right? Whether you work with clients with autism, whoever it is like, right. Let's say you have a client and you're like, this goal for this kid is independence. Okay. What the fuck does independence mean? Right. Or the, even like something like smaller than that, this, this goal is for this kid to talk. All right. Well, how are you going to get there? Right. I am the queen. I know, for example, even when Carol and I were creating the study notes ABA app, we'd be like, okay, we're going to write 2,500 questions today. Right. Like those were goals we were never going to meet. So every day it was like, we were never coming into contact with reinforcement. It was just like, this sucks. This sucks. This sucks. Set yourself these realistic goals that Danielle is saying that you actually can meet. In fact, do something that you definitely can meet that you might even go a little extra because you are able to, but it sucks when you never meet your fucking goal. Okay, sorry, yeah. you're doing great. <laughs> you first then yourself, right? We're all, we're working on all of these ABA skills. We have to use these skills on ourselves. So first I'm gonna read two pages and then I'm gonna take a break and get on my Instagram for five minutes and then I'm gonna go back. So just set those small goals so that you can feel successful that you are doing the steps that you need to do to reach your overarching goal. So we have those tiny steps in there in between. Okay, time management. So I am not a night owl. I am an early bird. I will go to bed at 8.30 and I can get up anywhere between three if I have to or five. I, have, I studied in the morning because that was the best time for me because I am an early bird. I know there are people that are night owls that can stay up all night. That is not me. Know your best time. Find a really good um, app. I have a really good app on my phone that is an alarm clock and it like gently wakes you up and it's not like a me. And so um, I use that to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I studied from three to 5.30 every day before work. So know your best times of studying um, so that you can utilize your time wisely. Cause I have two little kids. So studying after work was like a, a no go. There was no way. Um, so, and then make sure that you're, we all have grandeur of, right? Like I'm going to study for two hours. Well, that's really hard. So maybe initially you're like, I'm just going to study. I'm going to study for 30 minutes and then I'm going to take a break and I'm going to study for 30 minutes and take a break. Maybe you do that for a week and then the next week you're like, okay, I'm gonna study for 40 minutes. So build your endurance of studying because some of the chapters we all know are super dry. And sometimes studying for 30 minutes and a really dry chapter is really difficult. So give yourself some grace, right? Maybe it's a, a difficult chapter and you're like, well, I'm just gonna give myself 30 minutes and then um, take a break. So, and then make sure you're taking your data on yourself. Did you make it that whole 30 minutes? Did you have to stop early? so that you know how to make adjustments in your plan so that you're successful. And don't allow yourself that, that cheat, right? You know, I, I put my, I, my phone's on silent, my phone's on do not disturb, right? You don't wanna give yourself access to that bootleg reinforcement. So don't, don't let it sneak in there, cause it will. We all get distracted. You guys, also, like, when you're taking um, uh, mock exams, like really set your environment up like you're going to be in the exam. So that means no water, right? That means no cell phone, no Cooper book, no notes, right? And you're in a quiet environment that is just like simulating the, um, yeah, common stimuli at the test. Um, and then, you know, set your timer and then be like, okay, you know, I would get up halfway through and go get a sip of water because that's what I was going to do in the exam. I knew that I'd plan that in there. Um, and just... That's just my advice for that one. And all I want to tell you, like, there's something so nice about, like, I had a piece of paper that I tracked, like, how I did on different mock exams. And after I read a chapter, I check it off. Like, I know it's in a lot, like, the collective notebook you guys have, a lot of it. And I, like, love that wrinkled piece of paper so much. I still will not get rid of it because I, like, love seeing, like, like, I knew how much work went into every single mock I did. So, like, just to see that permanent product is really nice and reinforcing too. Yes, and those data sheets are gonna be your permanent product, right? You can see all of the work that you've put in for however many weeks or months or whatever that you, how, how your studying is going and how you've been successful and how you've improved. 
Um, so now we're going to just kind of talk a little bit about organizational skills. So everybody, right, we all, everyone's house is different. Maybe you live in an apartment. Maybe you live in a house. Maybe you, I, I don't have an office. So my office, my study space was my kitchen table. My poor husband had to deal with four or five boxes of pins on the kitchen table all the time and paper. And, but that's where I was. And I set that up and he knew that this was my study space. So, um, these are just some things to think about when you're setting up your study space, right? Make sure it's clean and decluttered. I always, as big a mess as I made and as many pens as I got out and pieces of paper and sticky notes and note cards, I cleaned up every time I was done studying. I stacked my stuff, I put my pens away, I cleaned up my papers, I stacked, I, I made notes of where I wanted to start. So how that, you know, how are you gonna set up your area where you can clean up and make a mess and clean up and make a mess? Um, organize it. If you need um, post-it notes, I have a million post-it notes, so I love a post-it note. So you have post-it notes or you need labels for your book. Do you have containers for your pens? Make it easy for you. Don't, make that response effort easy. You don't have to search for anything. It's all right there in front of you. You have your data sheets, you know, where you keep those. Um, I am a sucker for good lighting. I cannot work in low light. So if, if you are a low light person, make, your, make sure your area fits your needs. If you're a person that needs overhead lighting, set up your space, get a lamp. What, just think about those things. Like how do you best study with and what kind of light do you need? Um, stock your space. Pins, we all, we all know Liat's pin collection. Highlighters. Pair posters. that space. Pair that space as being highly reinforcing. Like I know these pairing packs are fun and it's, but there's a point behind it, right? Like there's a point that whether it's the pairing pack or your favorite candle that you light just when you study, right? Like you are pairing what you're doing as being reinforcing. So, you know, you're like, oh, I saved this $30 candle I bought that's super overpriced just for when I'm studying, right? Just the idea that you're aware that these things are just for that. So like save your best pens. I only use them when I'm studying. My pairing pack, I only use it when I'm studying. Um, so it's really important to try set up these differentiators or, and it's, and what I would do also with this organization is I knew if I was going to start on chapter seven the next day, I would have that part open for when I got there with my pens around it. Because for me, at least with my ADD, whatever I fall onto first when I sit at my desk, is what I'm gonna be doing. So if I happen to find stickers, I might sticker my entire desk calendar for no reason. So have what you're gonna do there ready to go. This is a great antecedent intervention. Yes. Set yourself up to be successful. Least low response effort, right? Um, like Liat said, designate your space to studying only. Block out distractions. Um, I have noise canceling headphones that are like regular headphones over the ear headphones that I use at the gym, but I also use them for noise canceling because I knew, um, cause I have taken a test multiple times that I was going to use the headphones in the testing center. So putting my noise canceling headphones, I was practicing that skill because they make a noise, like, you know, they make a noise. So they cancel out the noise. So it's different. So I, you know, practice those skills. If you feel like you want to use noise, canceling headphones in the test, see if you can get your hands on some or order some so that you can practice that when you're doing your mock exams. Or maybe you just needed to block out the noise that's in your house. Um, let's see. One um, thing you can't block out is the noise in your head though. <laughs> right, exactly, but that's okay. You need that noise in your head. Um, I have two little kids and so um, I worked really hard with them. It's not always perfect. One's eight and one is four and my four-year-old loves to talk all the time all day long, it doesn't matter where I go. So I had to really set some boundaries with them. Like, hey, I am studying right now. I am unavailable. You have to go ask your dad. So I put up a piece of paper that was like, that said, go ask your dad with his face <laughs> on it, picture I found. And so I had to, or I told them, you are not allowed to come out here. You can go, their rooms are in the back of the house. So I said, you can go to your bathroom and you can stay in your rooms, but you are not allowed past the bathroom door. So just setting up those boundaries and then going in and telling them, give, you know, giving them that positive reinforcement that I appreciate you, thank you. You know, that was really helpful for them. Um, decorate your space, post your why. Um, my daughter's really good about writing me love notes. So I would leave her notes out that, you know, she's telling me that I was doing a good job. So, um, Post your why, write yourself some love notes of why you're studying. And then we 
put your, put your phone away, right? So if we, we know our phone has a timer, but Alexa has a timer, your kitchen microwave has a timer, your oven has a timer, use something else instead of your phone. Don't even bring your, leave your phone, make your phone the difficult response ever. Leave it across the kitchen or leave it in another room because your time is valuable and you're learning valuable things. So you don't want your phone to be a distraction, which we all know that or all of our phones are a distraction. So having it close by makes it easy to be like, oh, I'll just take a break right now and I'll get on it. And then, you know, maybe you're um, on Instagram for 20 minutes. So put it away. Um, prompts. So these are really good. I um, am a big post-it person. So, you know, you have your stimulus prompt. So maybe you just leave a post-it in the chapter that you're gonna read. Um, I would post a post-it note in my car of things that I wanted to review when I um, was in my car, when I was stopped and I knew that, okay, I have like 30 minutes before I need to go um, somewhere else. So I'm gonna, I would always bring my stuff with me that I knew I was gonna use and then I would um, go through it. And I made a note and I stuck it on my um, <clears throat> center console and my husband was like, what are these? And I was like, these are, these are my reminders of what I need to do when I have a few minutes to myself. So use your post-it notes to help you. Write down what you're gonna, maybe it's, you know, you leave yourself a note that says on the garage door, hey, you need to read the rest of chapter five. And as you're coming in the house, just to remind you, because we're all busy. So use your, use those prompts to help you. Um, so these are, because we all love Cooper and you know, I love Cooper. Um, these are your, these are the steps in Cooper that they talk about for um, self-management and self-monitoring, right? So you want to have them, make the materials easy, you know, have access to them, give yourself prompts, use those sticky notes. Use those stickers, collect that on yourself, reinforce yourself. You know, we all need some NCR and then you want to monitor early and often. So, and then engage yourself in self and instruction, right? So ask and answer your own questions. I remember one um, time I was walking out of the gym and I was like, oh my gosh, that was, it just clicked. Like I, I knew the principle, I knew what was happening. I was like, oh my gosh. And then I went right home and looked it up to make sure that I was right. So you know, talk those things out in your head. Like, what are people doing? Be, you know, what are they doing on the TV? What are you doing? What are they doing at the gym? If we could ever get out of the house again. Um, so the gym is a great place to watch behavior. So, um, ask and ask yourself those questions and, and answer your own questions. Cause that's what you're going to do in the test too. You're going to read those questions and then you're going to answer them in your head. So that's a good skill to practice. Um, and you may need help from your friends. We all need help. So if you need, go tell people, hey, I'm studying. Maybe you need somebody to hold you accountable. Um, you need to just, you know, so then they can support you because, you know, you have your people that if you're having a hard day and we all have hard days and my sister was really great at this and I was just like, I am having a hard day. This is hard. The information is difficult. And she's like, you've got it. It's fine. Take a breath, take a, take a break and you can do it. So, you know, she knew what I was doing and believed in me. And so she was my person that I went to when I was struggling to remind me of my why. Um, and then be willing to adjust your, adjust your plan. If it's not working, it's okay. Just make tweaks to it and move on. This, this made me think of um, when I was pregnant with my daughter and I had this grand plan, this grand birth plan, and that is not <laughs> how it worked out. But I had to be willing to make adjustments in my plan. So... Um, so just, just be mindful. It's okay to make adjustments. Do you just want yourself to be successful? And that's it. So I'll stop sharing. All right, guys. So, and I, Danielle, I could share what I, um, what I posted to the, hold on, give me a sec. Are you doing the data sheets? Yeah, I just want to show you guys what we've shared. Oh, you're going to share the screen so you can talk through them, Danielle? Oh, I can. Oh, I'll share them if you want and you can talk through them. Okay. All right. Whoa, everything's going slow today. I don't know what's up. I know, my internet is also being slow today. Okay, let's see. None of those are the right group. Look how many study notes groups there are. Okay, here we go. All 
also I know, I, I know another big thing that's really important while she's pulling this up is give yourself breaks, right? Like if you're studying and you're starting to like hit a wall or it's, you're not retaining it anymore, you, we're, you have to give yourself breaks and it's okay, right? Like time block your day. Yes. And that's a good self-monitoring piece. Like I, you, you, I would have to stop and say, I'm not, I'm not really reading at this point. I'm just looking at the words. So I need to stop and go fold laundry or go do something else mindless that um, I didn't have to think about because I knew I wasn't reading the words anymore because it was just so much information. So that's a good, that's a good piece too. Just, it's okay to acknowledge like, oop, I'm not, I'm not reading anymore. And sometimes when you take a break or you sleep on stuff, you have a better, clearer picture of what you were just reading. Yes. All right, here we are. Guys, I cannot wait to take a shower. Let me just tell you that much. No one's judging your stinky armpits. <laughs> this is like the tabs in your brain, man. I know, my, my brain's like hurting from all these. I think it just me, must be the, um, I had to use my hotspot today because my- Yeah, my internet is just going like super slow. All right, here we go. I agree, Melissa. Casey always looks amazing, even if she needs to shower. I don't know how she does it, but every time. Okay, so here are the data sheets um, that I made for you guys. So you have like a whole interval data sheet. Did you study the whole time? I'm hoping my dog will stop barking because the ice cream man is outside. And um, <laughs> so, uh, but I just made it so you can set your own um, duration of time. So if you wanted to study for 45 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, and then you would just color in that whole block if you studied the whole time. Um, I'm gonna, hold on, that's a great question, Samantha. Sorry, see my dog is barking. So okay. what I did when I was studying, so whole interval is one way to record something, right? But I personally did momentary time sampling, which you could also do. So let's say you make each of these five minute intervals. So I would have the timer go off and if I was paying it, if I was actively working when that timer went off, I would put a plus, right? And it was like so rewarding seeing all my plus at the end. If I wasn't, I'd put a minus. Or you could do a whole interval. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think partial interval would be that useful for you. No, I don't think so too. Yeah. Um, the app I use, if you have an iPhone, is called Sleep Cycle. Oh, it's so good. It wakes you up so gently. It's amazing. Um, Okay, so this one I made for you guys, it's just a mock exam, right? So you take your one mock exam, you took your baseline, what's your baseline score? Did you practice your whiteboard skills? Cause that's super important. And then, um, you know, what are the task list areas you need to focus on? And then what did you get your second attempt? So just kind of track your, your um, mock exams. Cause that's important to make sure you take more than one. But uh, I know what the, um, and maybe Casey, you can talk to this. I know with BAS, you can take the mock exams twice. Do you know if it what can take, you can take the same exam twice? I don't know about um, FIT, but BAS, yes. And okay. um, when I, that, I love doing that. I was so excited. But wait, guys, don't just like take it and then take it again, because it's gonna have some reactivity. Yeah. Uh, so give yourself some time between it, take some other ones and then come back to it. Yes. Um, so whiteboard skills. So when you take your test, you get a little whiteboard. So you, that's just, that's a skill that you need to practice and use because you know you're going to use it on your test. And so, um, you know, if you took your mock exam and you didn't write anything out, um, you know, or did you write something out on a piece of paper and you can make it a pretend mock, uh, like a pretend whiteboard. We talked about it in our first, um, video last week about practicing your whiteboard skills. You just kind of want to practice all those test taking skills just so that you don't stress. And yeah, you can use graph paper. I take all my notes on graph paper just because I like the way it looks and I use graph paper, but whatever, whatever paper works, just practice those skills. How are you, how are you going to take a break or when are you going to take a break? How many questions are you going to do? So, um, you want to scroll Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then this is just that, um, she wrote copper, but she meant Cooper. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, those are the, you know, that negative reinforcement, right? So you're just coloring in those chapters as you, as you read them. So 
and then you're all done. You read all, even read chapter 29, that's ethics, even though there is Bertram Bailey, read, read chapter 29 in your Cooper book also. Okay, so this is just kind of one of those self-reflection sheets for your study session. Did you put your phone away? Are you in a quiet place? Just kind of a checklist. And then at the bottom, it talks about, um, did I have a really good study session? You know, like kind of rating your experience of studying or what didn't go well? Did it, was I able, not able to study the whole time? Was I distracted? Um, what else does it say on the bottom? I can't remember. Can we scroll up just a little bit, please and thank you. Um, I was distracted by what? for your um your intervals were they too long it, like did you set your your i'm going to study for an hour and then you only made it 45 minutes and that's okay so just make adjustments the next time going into your studying and then if you were distracted what were you distracted by maybe you're distracted by your kids by your husband by the dogs you know so you know just this is just a good self-reflection piece of um how how you can make adjustments right you're acknowledging what needs to be changed so And then um, how many hours you studied. So, oh, dog. sorry, everybody. Um, and you could graph that shit too. A cumulative yeah. graph is nice to see. Oh my God, look how many hours total I have studied. Yeah, so this is perfect, right? So I studied an hour on Monday and two hours on Tuesday and 30 minutes on Wednesday. And maybe Saturday you busted out and it, you study like eight solid hours. So now you can kind of look and see, am I, am I getting more hours in? This week was better than that week. So you have that. And then um, this is just good. I always think it's important to do practice questions. So Study Notes app um, has practice questions in the, let me look at it and see what it is. Where is it? In the, the um, fluency piece. So in the work it tab, and then it says fluency. This is, this is just one of those that I think it's important to, you're practicing, you're answering question skills. And so um, if you use study notes app or any other um, test prep app, you know, this is just kind of lets you know, okay, I, I did 50 questions today, or maybe I did a hundred questions today. So just kind of keeping track of those practice questions. Um, I think that's it. Is there one more? I think that's it. I think that's the bottom. Oh, no. And then just this is- And she spelled Cooper right. One mistake. If anyone's gonna give yourself, give yourself grace, because Leah never gives me any grace. Um, so this is just for y'all, if you wanted to use it, like what were the hashtags? You can make up your own hashtags. What are some AKAs? AKs are important to know. And then um, any type of key concepts you wanna remember. It doesn't have to be a bunch of notes, maybe just, you know, a quick thing. Also, like, this is great. Like, let's say you're taking a mock exam, right? And you see something that's kind of hard and you see you got it wrong. You're like, okay, dude, I need to remember that um, analytical is that like experimentation piece, right? That control. Write that down. Like when you do a mock and you get something wrong, it's then telling you what you need to do for future. So take away a key point on what you missed. I think it's important. I wrote down a lot of sticky notes. And then we give you one extra logo piece just in case you really want to represent study notes um, on your piece of paper. So that's a good, that's, that's a good that's, thing that's a you can, for you. You can print multiple yeah. off and take your notes on them and then post them to the app on study yeah. notes paper. Yeah, when I was they, taking mock exams, um, I would keep my like whiteboard and I would um, Basically, any topics that I, that came up that I was like, I really don't know this, I would just write it down. Um, and then I would make sure I'd go back and find that in the index in Cooper and write like whatever keywords I could come up with or just kind of like making sure I really understood the topics that A, I got wrong, but also that even if I got it right, but I was like, I don't know why I got this right. Like mm -hmm. just luck of the four answers. Um, I would definitely write it down and I had like a whole notebook just dedicated to like my mock exam notes. All right, guys. So any questions? I think there's, I'm going to end the recording.